Are you at a risk of failing? Do you think there might be a chance that you're starting to get over your head? Math can be difficult, but it doesn't always have to be hard. And I know we don't need to go into all the reasons why you could possibly be failing. But in this video, what I want to do is go over three things that we do ourselves to not put us in the position to be successful. And if that means you're starting to feel the frustrations and the stress of not doing well in your math class and maybe begin to worry if you're going to fail or have to drop the class, use this video as a guide to make sure you can give yourself the best chance at success for your math class. Now, the number one reason why students fail math class, it's pretty simple. And it's also pretty obvious. They're not in class. You have to have your butt present inside the class to get the most value out of your class. Yes, I know in the last couple of years, online learning has obviously taken over the educational space. And for a lot of students, they love the online learning experience because of the flexibility and maybe not having to deal with everything that comes along with school in person. But if we're going to talk about getting the real value of education, it's going to come from being inside the seat. I remember one time when I was teaching algebra one, almost every single one of the students that had a D or F in my class were simply not present. I was doing everything I could possibly do to help these students learn. But again, if if you're not inside the classroom, it's going to make it a lot more difficult to reap the rewards. Now I know nowadays, I understand that a lot of online education has replaced the in-person education. And even fast forward, if that class was happening today where these students could still check in on a Zoom call with my class, there's still a difference between education in person and online. I have live streams and course calls for different courses that I'm currently in, and I have to make sure I show up to those live. Because if I try to watch a recording, I just don't get the same value. So I make sure, I make an effort to make sure I can be there in real time. Now again, these are live streams that I can't show up in person, but but showing up in person is going to be a lot better than watching a recording, but it's still not better than being in an actual classroom environment. That is going to be the purest form of instruction and why it's always going to be a superior mode for us to be able to educate our students. So if there's anything I can pass along to you, please, if you start to struggle, make sure you're in class. Do not skip the class once you start struggling or failing. That's the absolute worst thing you need to do. You need to double down, make sure you can show up and try to get the help that you need. Now, the next reason why I see a lot of students begin to fail, the Something I've been told time and time again that we simply just don't teach in education, and that is how to study for math. A lot of students have no idea how to study, nor do they have the discipline that it takes to be successful in mathematics. If your idea of studying for math is staying up all night, cramming for your test, or reviewing your notes as fast as you can in the class period before, you're making your life a lot more difficult than it really needs to be. Math is something that needs to be done every day. It's a skill that needs to be developed and refined as well as practice. So if you start struggling with math, a lot of students just think that the problem is way more bigger than it actually is. And then they just get frustrated and they quit. Try to break up all the work that you need to do into small chunks and try to do anything from 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day. But you have to be consistent and you have to do it daily. I cannot tell you how much of a difference this made for myself when I was learning mathematics because it's so easy for your brain when you're learning something new to immediately forget the connections that you made practicing the problems. Stay consistent, do it daily. Another way to think about this is if I said, hey, you can get stronger by doing 10,000 push-ups. Are you going to go tomorrow and do exactly 10,000 push-ups? Well, most students, if they tried, would quickly realize they're not going to be able to do 10,000 push-ups in one day. That is a lot. And plus, you're probably not going to get too far before your arms just go ahead and feel like jello. Now, let's just say you actually could do 10,000 push-ups. That next day, are you really going to be that much stronger? Probably not. You're probably going to be really, really sore. However, what if I said for the next 100 days, I want you to do 100 push-ups? Now, how do you think you're going to feel after 100 days? You might be a little sore, but throughout that time of those 100 days by you being consistent of doing 100 push-ups each and every day, you're going to be pretty strong and you're going to be pretty good at doing push-ups. And that's what I want you to take away from the study habit. Don't try to do math all in one session. Make sure you break it up. Now, there's a lot of techniques and tips that I have for studying mathematics, which I have in the playlist down below. But for this tip, I just want you to focus on planning your math out and doing it every single day. Because by the time a test or quiz does come up, as long as you've been consistent and doing those math, the amount of studying that you have to do the night before should be very, very minimal. And last reason why you might be starting to fail is because you don't know the basics. And this one's kind of a hard pill to swallow because a lot of times we might get a good grade on a quiz or we might pass a class and we feel like that's a justification of information that we know. But I think we can all agree that a letter grade is not always a best representation of how much we actually know in a class. And if you've gotten a bad grade where you actually have worked really hard and feel like you've learned a lot of information, you can probably agree with that statement. Now, through my experience teaching calculus and pre-calculus, the number one reason why students struggled in those two courses was not 
actually the content that we were learning. The reason why those students struggled was because of the algebra. They lacked the foundations that they needed to be successful in those two courses. And then you might look at, well, why did they struggle with the algebra? Well, a lot of times it's because they struggle with the foundation of their number sense. Now, this is not to point blame to the elementary teachers, but to this idea, if we don't understand something, to not just forget about it and hope that we can move on and we're never going to see it again. Whenever you're taking a course and you start to struggle, you start to have that question of why is this the case? Why did you do that? How did you know how to do that step? Those questions are very, very important and just don't overlook those questions. Typically, those questions represent a gap in your understanding. And a lot of times those can be understood from previous content being taught. Now, obviously, if we're in a class with our friends or people that we obviously look up to, a lot of times we don't want to accept that we don't remember something we're supposed to know, i.e. fractions, factoring, but it's okay. You have to acknowledge what you know and what you don't know. And of course, if you're starting to fail your class, you have to do something about it. Go back to the basics, do some practice problems. I'm not saying it's fun or all the time it's going to be easy, but going back to the basics is one of the best things you can do when you start to struggle with new information. And if you're ever wondering on what you need to know, simply ask your teacher or look at the problems that you are doing and look at those basic operations that are being applied and find some resources to help you out. Failing a course is not fun. Failing a test or a quiz is not fun. I get it. And I know each and every time when we see a grade or we start feeling overwhelmed that we cannot be successful in a course, it's very easy to give up. It's very easy to stop doing. But the number one thing you can do to overcome all three of these reasons for failing a class is take action. Show up in the class. Make sure you're attentive inside the class. Ask questions. Take down good notes. Do your homework the same day that you have class. Review past homework assignments every single day. Do some extra math problems when you don't have homework. Review your notes on a daily basis. Again, 15 to 30 minutes can do a lot, just like 100 push-ups can do over 100 days. Don't be shy or afraid to ask the basic questions. A lot of times what we call the stupid questions, but you're not stupid. And just because even if you might have failed a class before does not mean that you have to fail the next class. There is no class or no grade that's ever going to define what you are capable of in your math journey. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want some more tips on how to be successful in math, go ahead and check down my playlist below or check the next video I have for you here. Cheers.